Hey friends, hey family, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another skincare video. My name is Terry. Today we are going to be going in depth and talking about vitamin C. A lot of questions have popped up in my comment section asking me about the use of vitamin C specifically, if you can mix it with niacinamide, when to use it, how to use it. There's no way I can possibly get to each and every comment. So that's why I decided to create a dedicated video just for this topic. And I took my time to create some notes here on my computer so in case you see me looking down on my screen that's what we are updating ourselves on if you're new to my channel hi welcome please take a second to hit the subscribe button down below and also hit the notification bell icon so you get notified anytime I have a new video up on this channel I hope my hair is in frame <laughs> if not we move So vitamin C seems to be the most studied skincare ingredient on the market right now and all the studies seem to prove that vitamin C is beneficial for your skin in one way or another. Most of these studies are focusing on topical vitamin C which our skin actually needs. We're first going to focus on how vitamin C helps your skin. Guys, I'm sorry if you hear any talking in the background. My neighbors are going off. The first noticeable amazing thing about vitamin C is the fact that it serves as an antioxidant and it helps to neutralize oxidative stress from the environment. And it also noticeably reduces the rate at which collagen, which your skin naturally produces, is broken down as a result of all the stress your skin goes through throughout the day. And it also helps to boost your sunscreen's rate of performance. Topical vitamin C on its own is not a sunscreen. And that being said, there's no way it can replace your sunscreen. It just serves as kind of like an energy booster for your sunscreen. And it actually does this by minimizing the rate at which the sun has an effect on your skin. Minimizing the level of inflammation and redness on your skin as a result of direct contact with the sun. Also, vitamin C also helps to boost the production of collagen in your skin so you have to have actual sunscreen on your skin in order for your topical vitamin C to do its job as an energy booster and this is actually what collagen is collagen is a stuff that helps keep your skin looking younger and fresher for longer <laughs> vitamin C is a cofactor for two main enzymes which are responsible for cross-linking in the production of collagen for a healthier collagen production making the collagen produced in your skin firmer, thicker and much much better for your skin Vitamin C also contains MMPI inhibitors which helps to prevent the breakdown of collagen in the skin by direct sun exposure and also environmental factors. Vitamin C helps to even out the skin tone by reducing hyperpigmentation in the skin. And it also helps to break down copper which reacts and as a result we have the overproduction of melanin. Also, huge disclaimer, huge disclaimer, this does not mean it's bleaching your skin in any way whatsoever. So when exactly can you use vitamin C? As mentioned earlier, I'd recommend you use it in the morning in conjunction with your sunscreen. It makes your sunscreen, whether physical or chemical, work much better and it adds an extra level of protection to your skin. I personally don't use my vitamin C's at night because I have my retinols, as I've mentioned in my previous video, stationed for my nighttime routine and I don't want to be mixing them together for obvious reasons because both of them are really strong skincare ingredients. And I know for a fact my skin is going to end up majorly irritated if I try something like that. I don't know about your skin. If I want to, I will. Bitch, I want to, I will. If I want to, I will. If I want to, I will. <laughs> Can vitamin C be mixed with niacinamide? Yes, vitamin C can be mixed with niacinamide, in my opinion. With vitamin C, immediately you open it. The time starts to tick and it starts to oxidize. That's how come you start to notice a discoloration in your vitamin C serum or cream after a while of opening it. So there are two main forms of vitamin C, active form and inactive form. It sounds simple, right? The active forms of vitamin C are those that are ready for direct application on the skin. 
So you just have to apply it and your skin has vitamin C to work with. And an, and an example of an active form of vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid. But studies show that vitamin C works best at 8 to 20 percent vitamin C. Anything over 8 to 20 percent is an overkill. It's not really doing anything. Your skin is only going to absorb what it needs and the rest is left sitting on your skin. A higher percentage of vitamin C on your skin really doesn't mean more effectiveness on your skin. Personally, I think l acid is extremely unstable for the skin and it oxidizes really quickly, making it completely useless to the skin. If you happen to have sensitive skin with vitamin C, I'd highly, highly recommend that you stick between 8 to 10% concentration. Anything more than that is just you begging for a skin irritation. <laughs> Some of my personal vitamin C favorites include this one from Belgian Labs, this one from The Ordinary this one from Paula's Choice and this one from CeraVe. I'm going to leave all of these vitamin C products linked in my description box down below in case you're interested in trying out a vitamin C serum and you don't know which one to gravitate toward. I'm here to make things as easy for you as possible. Now moving to the inactive forms of vitamin C. And these are the esterified forms of vitamin C. <laughs> esterified. So these forms of vitamin C are much more stable and they penetrate the skin. So these vitamin C's sit chemically inactive until they are applied directly to the skin. And they are also lipophilic, making absorption much better. An example of inactive forms of vitamin C is sodium ascorbic phosphate, that's SAP. And it's even been proven to reduce acne by minimizing how much sebum and inflammation occurs on the skin. If you have oily skin or sensitive skin or dry skin like me, vitamin C products that contain SAP are for you. So an example of vitamin C that contains the SAP is this one from Ole. In my personal opinion, the most stable form of vitamin C is magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. It isn't the best when it comes to absorption, but it does have all three major benefits of the vitamin C. And that's why it's the least irritating ingredient. And I know this one from Dermalogica has magnesium ascorbic phosphate. There is also ascorbyl glucoside and ascorbyl palmitate, but I'm not going to go into those two in this video. I'm going to do my best to link studies on these two vitamin C's that I've just mentioned in my description box down below. So in case you're interested in studying further about vitamin C, I'm going to leave them linked in my description box. So go ahead and feel free to read, study, grow, educate yourself. so so much for watching this video up to this point and i really do hope you find it helpful and you you were able to get some information from this video i'm so grateful to each and every one of you if you're not yet subscribed please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a big thumbs up if you do find it helpful and i'll definitely see you in my next video next week but until then bye